it's 10 o'clock mountain time that means <clears throat> that means it's time for tom and shane business and politics like it or not we're here mm -hmm. and uh, welcome everybody to 2021 we're happy to be here with you and uh, hey if you're watching us on uh, youtube hey don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell uh, the subscribe button's right below the video and when you hit the subscribe button the notification bell comes up so you will never miss another one of our podcasts so we're happy to have you along with us tom eagle hoff uh, your morning mayor at am 1450 kmms in bozeman montana and 13 40 KPRK in Livingston, and of course, to uh, my uh, to my side is uh, Shane Matab and half man, half amazing. He's in uh, Cantaloupes, uh, Canada today, so uh, we're happy to have Shane with us, of course, as always. And uh, hey, we're here every Tuesday. Uh, and uh, Thursday now, we're going to change our format up a little bit. We'll be here every Tuesday and every Thursday, and we'll take on a business topic each day that will help your small or home-based business succeed. And that is our goal. Our political shows are going to be on Saturday on our radio station, and uh, we'll be on from 8 to 11 Mountain Time. You can listen anywhere in the world at kmmsam.com. So uh, don't forget to... Uh, uh, bookmark that, kmmsam.com, and uh, you don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to leave an email. You don't have to do anything except listen live or listen now. So, And if you missed any of our past shows, uh, they're all on YouTube, and, of course, they're on kmmsam.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast. And, Shane, how you doing? Welcome to 2021, man. That's right. I mean, it became 2021. The sun came up. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was. It's a mild winter. You can see the stars at night, and uh, the market seems to be playing its tune. And uh, fortunate for me, I get an opportunity to share with you where we're going to go with the market, where we're going to go with business, yeah. and uh, be your guardian. Uh, you know, I can't join Space Force. Space Force, <laughs> not far, Space Force. Yeah. And I, I, some so I people, can't. some people might think it's a farce, but yeah. uh, anyway. <laughs> and and as you know, uh, President Trump has uh, named the uh, staff of uh, Space Force the Guardians. Yeah. So I've I've decided to take that pledge on. I, you know, I'm not going to play that I'm an expert or or a brilliant mm -hmm. guy. Just you're just a guardian, guardian for you in the market, guardian for you in your business, and guardian for you with your money. So All right, there we go. We want to make it interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, today we're going to talk about business plans and business plans for the most part. Uh, they have, they do a lot of things, but business plans uh, have two primary purposes, as uh, you well know, Shane. They do, um, uh, for one thing they do is if you want financing, either from a bank or uh, uh, an investor or something like that, they're going to want to see a plan of what you're going to do. How are you going to make this business succeed? And uh, so we're going to talk about the parts of a business plan, some questions you need to ask yourself. The other one is that it forces you to write down and think about everything. You know, if you're going to open a restaurant, uh, what kind of tables are you going to have? How big are they? What chairs are you going to have? Um, what uh, equipment do you need? If you're a mechanic, how, how much uh, business space do you need for how many cars can you handle at one time? So all these things, uh, the business plan will force you to think about these various things. And today we got seven questions. We've got seven questions that we want to uh, go over. And uh, that will help you start your business plan. And we'll talk about more about business plans as we go along in the uh, in the podcast ahead. So let's jump right in, Shane. And uh, first question, of course, is uh, who are we? And that would, of course, be um, what do you bring to the table? What what expertise do you have? What certifications do you have? What education do you have? Uh, if you want to open a pizza parlor, uh, it's probably a good idea that maybe you worked in one at one time. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the other aspect of it, too, when this is really important, particularly at the beginning of your business plan, because anyone, uh, even if it's your personal banker, because you're doing it personally, or as Tom pointed out, investors, or, you know, you can go to government uh, programs right now that in, in opportunity zones in your country. 
And in Canada, we have the uh, Investment Bank of Canada, where you can actually go and get a, a loan from the Canadian government. But having said that, um, very often you start out uh, with a vision statement. And uh, within that vision statement is what they call a, a mission statement. And it, they're usually about uh, one page, less mm -hmm. than 100 words. Um, but the, the vision statement is basically um, clearly a, a vision of what it is. What's the product? maybe a line about how it came about. It's proprietary. If it's proprietary, it's very important you put that in the vision statement. So people know that maybe it, they can't find it anywhere else because it's just yours. And then, of course, as, as you move into the from you know the vision, vision statement, you then move into the mission statement. And then this is a lead in, maybe a paragraph or two again after the vision statement, a lead into the body of the business plan. And the importance of that is that the, the mission is how am I physically going to get there? You know, I just talked to you about how I thought about getting there it was my vision. But now I'm going to tell you how I'm going to get there. And uh, this is a requirement for banks and, and investors in a big way. And as Thomas pointed out, it helps you stay, you know, stay uh, aligned, you know, with, with your blinders on. It, your business plan is like putting on a set of blinders, not sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right, because we've got to, uh, um, you know, the the <clears throat> this is probably the most important part. And I think what uh, Shane was talking about was the executive summary, which is at the beginning of the business plan. And usually that's a, that's a page and a half or so or a page, as Shane pointed out. And uh, that pretty well gives the basis of everything. But the most important question <clears throat> to ask in there is, um, you know, who are we? What do we bring to the table? What is our expertise? What do we bring that we're, uh, what knowledge do we bring that is going to make this business work? And that's, that's the crux of, uh, of that first question. So, yeah. So, so uh, in, in the vision statement, uh, you know, it's always about the location, maybe if it's a, if it's a food mm -hmm. vending thing that you want to do. Yeah. Um, if, if it's a specific type of product, uh, whether it's imported or you have it produced, um, you know, some people pr purchase things uh, and then bring them here and, and sell them as a third party. And wh whether you've got a website, um, you know, do you have a website? Do you have a storefront? Where, what's the address? What are the directions? And these are the things that now in the modern age that we used to get in a binder. <laughs> But now you've got the glory of the internet. So all this yeah. can be described, um, you know, with the mm -hmm. with the, the the homepage and everything, as we know it. But it's still going to require that executive beginning to the business plan, as Tom mm -hmm. pointed out. Yeah, and the executive uh, plan uh, you always write last. It's the last thing you'll write in the business plan. So. All right. Uh, next question. Question two, <clears throat> what do we do? And this would be products or services, obviously. Do you have a tangible uh, product? Uh, can I hold it in my hands? Do you sell me a widget of some kind that uh, I can use uh, in my business or my home or whatever? Uh, or is it an intangible product that I can't hold in my hands? Like, uh, you know, I can't hold clean carpets in my hands. I can't hold, uh, you know, I can hold the insurance policy, but I can't hold the idea of the insurance policy in my hands. So you're selling a, a tangible or an intangible uh, product. So uh, that's going to uh, that's going to change how you market and advertise the product down the road. So. Um, and uh, what is what is it about this product? Um, you know what uh, what brought this product to our attention, or is it something that we invented ourselves? And the other thing I really want to stress to you is uh, you may have uh, you may be the principal of the uh, of the business, or you might have partners. If you have partners, the the best advice I can give you is you never ever under any circumstances make any partnership a 50 50 partnership you can't do that now you can but the reason being is someone has to make a final decision you can't have a 50 50 partner saying uh, well i think we should do this and the other one says no i don't think we should do this so you're 50 50 so what are you going to do so somebody 
somebody's got to be 51%. Somebody's got to have the final say. So you're going to have to sit down with your partner and you're going to have to decide who is going to have the final say in what we do. So why do we do it? Or what do we do rather? Uh, so, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe as a restaurant owner, uh, you have a chef who's a partner, but you have to make the decisions because you're the one taking the majority of the risk. The chef is an employee. Uh, even if he might be a partner, he is an integral part of the business, but uh, still uh, someone has to call the final shot. Someone's got to have the final say, and both partners need to agree to that. So, so that's, uh, that's part of the uh, equation. That's right. And, and very often when you find yourself in, in, in a situation like this, um, you can go online. Uh, if you live in Canada, you can go provincially online and you can buy a kit for like $450. Um, it's the same. I've gone online in the U.S. In, within each state uh, because you want to set up a state company. There's different types. Uh, you know, there's partnerships, limited partnerships, and you should learn the, the one that you want and, uh, and the type of structure you want to have. And as Thomas pointed out, you want to have control because when you set up a company and you set up shareholders, and uh, provide uh, interest in that to the people that you think are important. But at the very beginning, until you have someone that has shown a willingness to work with you, participate with you, you really don't want to make uh, anyone a shareholder uh, until they've been with you for a, uh, certainly a good period of time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, 90% of restaurants close in the first year. Wow, second year, 60% of the 10% left close. So, you know, before you start giving anyone away interest in your restaurant, you better wait 10 years or two years, excuse me, mm -hmm. as an example. Um, the other the other thing, too, about, you know, what we do here is important for you, again, for yourself to remind you and people you show your business plan to, um, what the competition is. You, you always, now, whether you're going to open up a pizza, pizza store, which is the most popular fast food in America, um, that by far 10 times greater in, in, as far as sales as the rest of the fast food industries in the U.S. Uh, so you, they're like the coffee shops that you've seen of, of the Starbucks age, uh, where you could have several pizza places on the same street. But, you you know, you need to elicit the willingness to put put uh, something about your competition on the street. Like there's four or five competitors on my street, but I think I may make a better pizza and I'm going to sell it at a better price. And, and so you have to really draw this interest um, with regards to your business plan. And on those, you know, sad and sorry days, you know, you, you want to get your business plan out and read it. it it's, always a, it's always a positive thing to lift you up and, and give you cause uh, because it, it can be a, either a very long journey or a short one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Moving, moving right along, of course, as uh, we are wont to do, of course. Um, Got to get uh, these things in here. Uh, question number three is, why do we do it? Why do we do what we do? Well, uh, apparently, um, we, uh, we've seen a need for the product or service. And uh, the other thing we need to talk about briefly is, and I, I say this no matter what's going on, it's never a bad time to start a business. There's never a bad time to start a business. Now, you might say, well, Tom, we're in the middle of a things are uh, Things are bad. Um, you know, nobody's working. Uh, what's going on? And, well, I will tell you, if you have a product that people want, they will buy it, no matter what the conditions are uh, around you. Uh, they will, you know, there are things we all need, and we go buy those things. We buy food, we buy, uh, uh, you know, if the car needs repair, we get it repaired. Uh, so if you have a need of a product and you supply, you supply that product, then uh, people will buy it. So don't think that this isn't the ideal time to start a business because it is. Um, because if you have a good product, people will move heaven and earth to get to it. So. And the, the, the why do we do it is always an important aspect because that's the mode. This is the motivator for you as the individual. This is the motivator is you, the owner, the proprietor of your business. And uh, 
as, as I like to say, or I was taught by my, my grandfather, Scottish grandfather, you know, is it something you want or is it something you need? You know, you can have anything you want in this world. Just yeah. bring the money. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you've got the money, you can have anything you want. If you want a yacht, go for it. <laughs> so if you have lots of money, you start with, do I want it or I need it? But if you're everyone else in the middle class wanting to move up into the upper middle class or in the lower upper class, mm -hmm. then it's, do I need this? So <clears throat> you have to try to make a decision of the product you sell. Is it something people will want to buy because they want it? Or is it something they'll want to buy because they need it? Now, the flip side to that is you have a huge benefit in the country you live in. Uh, living in the greatest country club in the world is predicated on people consuming. And uh, largely, Americans don't just consume what they need. They consume what they want. So in most countries, people uh, don't have that luxury. They don't have what is known as expendable income. <clears throat> this is why in your business plan, pricing your product is so valuable. Because you have to be able to compete with other people because people do now look on the internet because they have so much ability to do so um, at competing products. So you have to find an edge to yours. It could be price. It could be availability of where you make it. All of these are the things that you want to do about <clears throat> why we do it. And, and finally, um, this is a big one. Uh, and the big one is you've made a decision in your life and you're going to follow through on it. Because every step you take in this direction is a commitment to succeed. And I say this in all seriousness. You know, uh, two of my rants at the end of our show on Saturdays is I say to, pay, I say to people, live in the moment. And, and that's so important because when you own your own company, you're always living in the moment. We'll talk about decisions and all of that later. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is live to work. Uh, <clears throat> if you own your own company... You get up in the morning and you should be excited. I know sometimes you'll be stressed, but you should be getting up every day excited because you are living to work. You're doing what you want to do and getting paid for it. And that's the whole thing about a business plan is helps you get there and make a profit because you're the last guy that gets paid. And the more successful and the bigger you get, you're still the last guy to get paid. So, you know, if you, if you live to work, you don't work for the man. If you work to live, then you're paid by someone else and you're not as maybe happy. So living to work is a great thing for two reasons. Your business life, it, it enhances you, your social life, it expands it and your personal life. You come home happy to your family every day because you live to work and they need you home happy every day. That's for sure. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's always been said that if you, uh, uh, if you're happy with what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, you know, so that's exactly right. That's what Shane, Shane was pointing out. Well, the next question is, uh, who do we do it for? Who do we do this business for? And of course, that's our target market. And this is really, this is really tough because Shane and I went through this uh, during this podcast. Uh, we, we did an experiment for eight months and we found that uh, we were not talking to our market. So we're trying something else that we're trying uh, to talk to uh, a different market so that uh, uh, we hope uh, uh, we know more than they do. And that's why they're here to find out what we know that they don't know. And uh, so uh, your target market, uh, that would be how old are they, education, uh, any number of things, uh, income, uh, uh, their experience, uh, all of that. Um, do they use similar products and, and services? And, uh, uh, you know, so you're going to, you're going to end up, um, probably, I guess is making, uh, making the mistake that you think everyone is like you. Uh, if you, that's the station you listen to, that may not be your target market at all. You know, it may be on the rock station. It might be on the talk radio. It might be on the country station. Who knows? Um, but uh, if you can identify your ideal customer, if you can sit down and say, okay, my ideal customer is 30 years old, college graduate, uh, $70,000 income, uh, two kids, uh, and they need my widget for this reason. 
And that that's the people that you try to go after, because if you advertise to the wrong person, that's just wasted money. I mean, that's just money that you just might as well send to Shane and I. <laughs> just give it to us you know, because you're wasting it. Uh, the, the key to this question of who do we do it for, as uh, Eagle Man's pointed out, is uh, is a factor of clientele. And, you know, you do networking in the old days, but now in the 21st century, you have the Internet. So obviously uh, your web page, your website, your home page and everything. And the other social media that you involve yourself in for pr promotion of your product will tell people who, who you're doing this for. Uh, the other great thing about the 21st century and social media is you have a greater opportunity to create a, a broader span where, you know, uh, 30, 40 years ago, or 20 years ago, you only may be were working in a 10, you know, 10 to 20 year span um, of a marketing group. Now, now you can reach a bigger number of people. And, and while that's still the marketing group, you can add to it with other people. That's, and a lot of this came <clears throat> as a result of television ratings and what they learned from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s into the 80s about television ratings and so marketers in the in the it industry and on computer um have have basically learned from that how to go about marketing for you and the reason that this is important is because it's personal when, when you do this personally when you make this decision to start this journey go on this trip uh, you're very often the the person has to make the final decision because no decision is indecision so you, uh, Every day you have to make a decision. Uh, Fridays are a good day because at the end of the day on Friday, you should go home. There's nothing more you can do until Monday morning. So don't you, you, if you, no matter how, about, how, how big the problem is, can't do anything about it over the weekend, forget about it. Because you know the, I'm giving you some really great advice here because long term, you have a lot of Fridays like that where you just go home, let it go. Don't take it home. Rest up. Maybe on Sunday afternoon, bring something out and maybe start thinking about it, you know, if you need to come up with a solution or an answer. So, yes, we do it for you because you're the client and you sustain me. You, you, you provide my family and I with a, uh, a, an income for us to live. And uh, the more we reach and more successful you are, the better off we become. So we're, we're, we see you as being the most important thing to the success of our business besides our business plan. And I think Tom is frozen up, so I'll keep calling and hopefully he'll come back. So <clears throat> there's different parts to a business plan. Um, and he does have some more questions about which we will follow up on. Um, as, aside from <clears throat> the corporate vision statement and, uh, you know, what I mentioned before about the mission statement in the summary at the beginning, you, you then uh, find yourself looking at three areas of, of the business plan that are very effective, financial statements, income statements, and a marketing plan. And uh, clearly these are pretty self-explanatory. Financial statements are present situation and where you are financially and what financial um, expectations you have for the next several years. Most business plans will run for at least five years of expectations. Um, certainly, if you're in uh, the IT industry or you're looking for outside funding because you think it's going to be substantial to develop something, uh, you, you're going to have to have uh, financial statements into the future of at least five years to show the, to, the type of growth you're expecting. And uh, most financial statements can be easily found uh, right on your computer. Actually, every computer um, is graced with uh, uh, the ability for you to set up and create a financial statement, columns and, and edges and, and things. Uh, it's to begin with, if you've never done it, it's a bit of a time consuming project, but it will carry you through and you can find lots of information. And we can talk specifically about uh, those uh, as we move through this process. Um, the other issue that you want to look at, of course, is your income statement. Now, uh, 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 the income statement is now expected sales um, so that you create 
and and you launch your project knowing I'm going to spend this amount of money between now and six months from now. I'm going to have this much money for everything that I need, product, uh, wages, uh, um, uh, manufacturing facilities, everything that you're going to need. And then what the income is going to be once you start selling this. And these, again, are straight. It's a straight numbers. And uh, <clears throat> you list uh, the, these things um, on, the, on the left side of the uh, income or a financial statement uh, that you break out and um, you follow through to, again for a, a term of uh, five years uh, some people will do it for 10 five years is about a, a good average and uh, then you follow that up with an, another one another flow sheet and that's the marketing plan uh, people are always captivated the most by how are you going to best sell your product like wh- how are you going to go about marketing this product uh, because every product uh, new or old and people have sold new old products with new ideas uh, it's just a matter of where you can <clears throat> produce them and that's that becomes an, a major part of the whole overall business plan that we're talking about where where am i going to produce this and what that, what's the specific cost of that and uh, that becomes the whole issue because you know, well, people have consumable income um, for their managed lifestyle of what they need for expendable income of what they want. You know, you if it's a want, if, you, if you're selling something you want people to want, not that, you know, then it, it has to be viable. It has to be something that uh, they're going to look at and say, boy, this above anyone else's I'm going to buy. So it's a very important play in that direction. Oh, Tom is back now. Ah, uh, stupid internet. Uh, it sucks here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, he's out of the freezer, folks. And yeah. back, so back, we- back in business. <laughs> oh, geez. Where do we live off here? Uh, why? Why do we do it for them? Right, uh, Shane. I think that's our next uh, our next question. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I just went away. So. Uh, our stupid internet here just uh, it's a tin can and a string is what it is so it just dies all the time so thanks for uh, to shane for keeping the program going at least and uh, why do we do it for them shane why do we do it for this target market because uh, they have a need for it or at least we perceive they have a need for it and uh, you know they're uh the other thing that we have to think about um this may be our primary market, but is there a secondary market we need to think about also? Are there other people that we need to think about doing this for? You know, the wife uh, goes out and buys the uh, groceries, but I may be the end user of uh, the groceries. Uh, some of them anyway. Well, retailing a product is, a, is uh, the whole, one of the major concepts of capital, mm-hmm. uh, because what you're doing is giving people a choice. Uh, th- things have changed so drastically in the last 20 years, uh, e- uh, but but not that much. Okay, I'll give you an example. Go into any mall, and I can guarantee you when you go up to the information, you know, and, the, and you just look at clothing stores, you'll find two men's clothing stores and uh, two dozen women's clothing stores in that mall. So now you know who's the consumer in the family. Now, this, uh, this has become a long tradition because of, uh, consumption being, you know, a consuming nation. You you consume 25%, 25% of everything that's produced in the world and you create over 25% of what's produced in the world. So not only do you just consume, but you produce. So now you're on that, you're on that side of the table. You're on the production side of that table. And as the Eagle Man rightfully stated, you want to find a product that people will need. It, it's, that's a bigger plus and not, not that, what people want but that they need and and this is why the guy that invented the toothbrush made a fortune because people use it every day soap is the same detergent is too um but of course you know unless you're really geared up to something like that you find it really amazing although you look at gum you know uh, 30 years ago when they discovered they could use oil to produce gum um, instead of having to produce gum from the jungle, and it was just a chemical process, it changed everything. People don't even know what they're chewing is gum. It isn't gum, it's it's oil, but yeah, 
it's the way it goes. That's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. So um, we're doing this for you because we think we're smarter than anyone else out there. And we've got something better that you're needing or wanting. And uh, that's an important idea. It's, it's This is the big banana, baby. Why do we do it for them? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, you're doing it because you, you know, you live to work. Yeah. And, and you want to get paid. So you're, you're yeah. all doing it so that they will buy your product so you get paid. So That's right. Yeah. You know, we, we yeah. got a profit on it because we will talk about that a lot, about how you try to accelerate profits is through growth. And, yeah. you know, you don't want to be too successful and collapse. Mm -hmm. That's happened. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I dozens and oh, thousands of times people have come up with a great idea and it was successful, but they weren't able to manage it and it collapsed. And yeah, that's yeah. That. somebody called. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> see, I'm busy. Yeah, I know you're busy, you're a busy guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, the other big question we've got to ask is how will we do it? How are we going to make this happen? How are we going to get financing if we need it? How are we going to uh, how are we going to get uh, the products or services that we need? Uh, how are we going to do all those things? So we got to sit down and we've got to think about, OK, what do we need? We need a list of things that we uh, that we've got to have. And um uh, you know, we've got to uh, we've got to get startup money or uh, if we're working for home uh, from home and have a home based type business, maybe we sell something on the Internet or something like that. Then uh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to where, where are we going to put our information um, either in uh, print, uh, on the air, on the Internet, um, you know, wherever, uh, wherever we can reach our target market and our target market has to be where we are. So, or, or we have to be where they are, I should say. So yeah. we've got to be very accurate on that. Yeah. This, ahead, is, this becomes a very important element of, of the financial statement. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it is, is because of two things. Uh, what's the basic cost of your product and what's the basic cost of delivering it? And if you're 21st century and you're working from at home, Cost of delivering is Federal Express, DHL, um, whatever, uh, UPS. So it, it maybe just the regular mail service, depending on how far you're sending it. Uh, manufacturing something is either first person, second person. If you're going to manufacture your product yourself, there, there's capital costs there. Mm -hmm. Your financial statement has to explain uh, the amount of money that you need to set up whatever facilities that you have to produce the product you're going to create. A lot of people will start their business because they can find a second party to produce their product. And because of that, they save a lot in capital costs or setting up the company. And they find out if their product is viable. You know, if it's something people not only want, but may need. So <clears throat> that's how you will do it. <clears throat> And uh, funding, as Tom has, has pointed out, can come from three different sources, debt financing uh, with a bank, investment financing with investors, or the third is personal financing with your own money. So the, those are the three routes you have a choice to make. Um, it's like saving to buy a house. Some people save to start a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sandy says, uh, welcome back, guys. Hey, we're happy to be back, Sandy. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. And happy thank to you be here. Me, Sandy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, Shane brings up an important point uh, that if you are going to use investors, uh, you need to kind of beware a little bit because the investors, for the most part, uh, they're going to want their money back pretty quick. Um, you know, they're, they're not looking for a 50-year uh, investment. Uh, they're going to give you startup money and they want that money recouped pretty quickly. And as a result for putting up the money, they may want a, a decision making uh, share in your business. So you need to be careful if you're going to use uh, some uh, some types of investors because uh, they can, uh, you know, they can they can make it hard on you to. Uh, uh, succeed and maybe their timeline is much shorter than your timeline to get your business to the break even level. That's correct. And, and in, when you're talking about, um, you know, uh, second party capital, 
Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are two. Um, one are personal, like family, family, friends, or people that find out about what you're doing and and uh, make an or an inquiry. But the others, what are known as angel investors. Now, mm-hmm. angel investors um, are a particular class of people because they do this for a living. They don't care about you, and they don't really care about your company. Uh, what they look at is the risk, and they look at your business plan, your financial statement, income statement, marketing statement, and they make a, dis- a decision based on that uh, and the risk of how much they might invest. Now, the whole key to this and the, the biggest sale to angel investors um, is that uh, uh, you're going to go public. Well, they know that <clears throat> you, you, you know, they have to hold their stock for two years. So, you know, you've got a two year window with investors because if they have to hold their stock for two years before they sell it. So they don't going to they're not going to be a hard time. This is your this is your window. You have a two year window. This is your window of opportunity with what you're doing, because <clears throat> as I, I'm going to repeat it, because it's real important. They can't sell. But after they've held your stock privately as an investment under the SEC rules, once you file and go through the process to become public they're now eligible to sell their stock on the first day of trading. Oh, now that becomes interesting. What did you just say? Now you know why you see these issues on new IPOs and the prices they're Mm -hmm. set at supposedly. Oh, we're going to the market at 25. It opens at 62. Right. Sure. Well, you know, there's a game that's played here and it's called who, who in the angel Funding, you know, the, the safe angel, yeah, right, the funding group who's been around for two years gets out first, right? Because they're yeah. going to be gone, okay? <laughs> they got in at the beginning, you know, they're first in and first out. That's that's one of the lessons here. We yeah, have that's for sure. Yeah, so you need to be really careful of that. Uh, IPO is uh, in, uh, initial public offering, by the way, for uh, those of you who... Uh, don't know what that means. That means uh, when you go on the market, if you do, you it may be a while before you do that if you're a small business or a startup, which is kind of what we're talking to today. And our last question, uh, Shane, um, what will keep us from doing it? Uh, one of the main things that will keep you from doing it is you. Uh, you will procrastinate. You will think about it. You will dream about it. You will want to do it. But taking that first step, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, there's three things you need to worry about. One is something that I call forced discipline. Uh, when we're kids, uh, our parents tell us to do everything. They make all the decisions. Uh, when you're in school, you're teachers. When you're in the military, you're officers. When you're working, it's your boss. And your whole life you've been trained to let someone else make the decisions. And now all of a sudden you're the guy at the top. You're the guy making the decisions. So that is uh, for, for many people, that's a big step. That's, that's hard uh, because you don't have anybody to turn to and say, "Uh, what do I do? You know, boss, well, boss isn't there. You're the boss. Second thing is uh, getting advice. Um, when, uh, you know, if, if I'm, if I want to learn to play golf, I'm not going to ask a bowler, uh, how to play golf. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down the bowling alley and say, Hey, I need to learn to play golf. So, uh, help me out here. Uh, don't take any advice from anybody who's not qualified to give it. You know, don't, don't, don't ask the guy on the bar stool next to you. What do you think about this business idea I have? Uh, that person isn't qualified to do Jack. And also uh, your parents, your parents have no idea what you're thinking about. If you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to put out a new video game, it's very doubtful your parents would, would, yeah, now you're talking. Finally, you're, you're, finally, you're getting some smarts. I don't think so. So uh, whoever, whoever you're talking to, uh, they need to have some expertise in what you're you know, what you're doing. So if you want to start a pizza parlor, go down and, you know, drive three, uh, you know, three counties away and talk to a pizza owner, you know, in some other county and ask them, hey, you know, what are the issues here? What's the problem? What do I need to, what do I need to think about? So, and uh, 
the last thing is vision. Vision. When you have children, uh, you don't think of them at 25 crawling around on the carpet, chewing on the coffee table. You, know, <laughs> you think of them as, as adults and everything you do from birth to them leaving the nest is to prepare them for the world. And the thing for you to do the very second you decide to start your business is to sit down and imagine it's already there. Imagine it's already there. Act like it's there. Walk like it's there. Talk like it's there. You know, if you need incentive, uh, go out to open houses and touch the house you want to own. <laughs> go down and test drive the car you want to drive. Put yourself in the shoes that you're already successful. And that's, that's great advice, I think, for anybody who's, who's starting out because you, you've got to put yourself in the mindset that success is not an option. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not an option. It's a requirement. That's right. And, and it's one of the great aspects of life is being able to make choices. And uh, what you find out, and I raised my children and told them until they were 18 that uh, there was uh, some choices that they wouldn't have. And that uh, the, her, their mother and fa their mother and I would make choices for them, and and so the point was was to teach them about choices and how to make them. And as they got older, they got to make more and more choices. They start out simple, just as an infant. You make choices about smells you like, mm -hmm. you see, and then as you get older, you like food you like, and these type of choices. But I also warned them that by the time you're 18, you, you can make all the choices you want for the rest of your life because I'm I'm out of here, baby. I, you know, I, I'm not the one paying your rent anymore. I'm, I'm not the one, you know, uh, uh, feeding you and uh, clothing you except by gifts, you know, or when you visit. You know, if you're kind enough to visit. We'll have, gladly feed you. We'll, we'll gladly help you out and go shopping and so forth. So, you know, when you get into your 20s, the 20s are the, uh, the decade of uh, life of me, me, my, and I. One of the most important things you need to learn about when you're alone in that first decade of your 20s, which actually is the best decade of your life, is, is decision making. Uh, decision making, making becomes the most ultimately the most important thing. It's easy to make a decision to uh, uh, work, work to live, and that that is working for someone else because they just tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're going to live to work, you you have to make decisions constantly. Okay, so what are the things here? Two things: no decision is indecision. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, a decision basically is solving a problem, so you have to learn how to solve problems. The downside of that, you might make a bad choice, but you can't have any regrets. Um, a good developing company with a good leadership always has people that ha have no regrets about the decision they made the day before, even though today they found out, oh, my goodness, if I had known this yesterday, I wouldn't have done that. That's great. You learn something. You learn how to succeed by failure. The, the greatest men in the history of, of the United States and Canada um, as the pr premier first you know, countries in the world have had great failures of men that have gone on to do huge and amazing things. And occasionally we'll talk about a few of them as we enjoy this time with you. So right now you have to learn that uh, in this case, how do you succeed? No is not on your list. No, I can't is not on your list. I can't isn't on your list. It's I can, yes, let's get this done. How do we solve the problem? You can do it with the people around you. Uh, that's why you have them. And you can do it with other people you can get advice from. They will gladly give it to you. And boy, people that invest in your company, they'll give you a lot of advice. Because remember, <laughs> they're risking something too. So they got meat in the game, baby. The dog's afoot. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I want to repeat something under uh, under this one, uh, too, that uh, I talked about earlier. And that was if you have a partner, uh, one partner's got to be in control. Um, one partner has to be 51 percent. And uh, if you're a husband and wife, um, this can be <laughs> kind of iffy. But uh, if you're a husband and wife, uh, make the wife 51 percent, because if you do any government contracts, she's a minority. 
and uh, you may uh, get some prefer preferential treatment in uh, bidding and things like that because the government is required to do a certain amount of uh, business with minorities. So keep that uh, keep that in mind. So and uh, when you're setting up your company, which we briefly talked about, and we will talk further about in the future, um, yeah. there's two things, two choices you make. Uh, if you do, if you don't take the eagle men's advice, which is really good, we but we're going to give you choices because you have to make them. You have to solve these problems. If it's a 50-50 partnership, you always want to include in the uh, company's minutes and and a board meeting and past it, and it becomes part of the company's law, bylaws. And that is is that unless both parties agree, you don't do it. So, you know, the, he, Tom's right. It's a terrible way to run a company if you have to both agree on everything. But mm. at the same time, if you're personal partners, that's the best thing to do is agree on everything. Yeah. You shouldn't fight over it. Yeah. Um, the second thing is, is that and when, when you make allowances for other people to participate with you, um, that makes the decision a lot easier. So, in other words, if you have a partner that is intricate to it, <laughs> but you keep 50% and when you issue more shares, you know, you make sure that the, the shares come out of his percentage more than yours. Like if you, know, you got to give somebody five shares, he, he, your partner gives them three and you give them two. So yeah, <laughs> these are the kinds of little tricks. And then the third issue that you have is what's called a shotgun clause. Now a shotgun clause is a, a interesting concept. It was developed about 400 years ago. And what it states is that, if I if if we are 50 50 partners and I want to buy you your 50 percent out, I can come to you and say, Eagle Man, I want your 50 percent. Here's 50 grand. And you have 24 hours to respond to my 50 grand. Yes or no. Now, if you say no, you have to pay me more for it than the 50 grand I offered to buy it for. So that's the hook. Because, you know, if it's worth more than 50 grand, why wouldn't you pay me 50 grand more or 60 grand? And I ha and then I have to sell you my 50 percent. But if you do say yes, you give me your shares for 50 grand. It, it, it's an interesting thing to think about. And this is one of these things that when we talk and then we come on in, in two days, you, you may have questions because you'll think about it because you go, well, how does that work? That's 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 an interesting thing. I can buy you out. He, you want to buy me out, but if I want to pay you more, so you, you may have to, in other words, if your partner wants to buy you out, he's got to pay you a, 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 a you know, an inflated price because, you know, mm -hmm. you can't buy it cheap. You can't yeah. buy it from you for 50 grand. If it's only, if it's only worth 50 grand, he's got to pay a 50, 60, 70, 100 grand because he doesn't want you to come back and go, Hey, buddy. <laughs> Here's 110 grand. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if many startups are going to be uh, faced with that, but we'll uh, we'll see. No, it's anyway. not a startup. It's the expectation of the success. So That's you true. Have, you have to have it when you start up. You have to have yeah. that down. It's sort should of should be in your plan. Prenup. It's a prenup, folks. You know what that is now with marriage. No. So yeah. Is, yeah. You have a prenup for business. Prenup for right. business. All right. A uh, couple of uh, websites, and I'll put them down in the uh, description below. Uh, if you need help with a business plan, uh, the Small Business Administration, SBA.gov, SBA.gov, uh, they have sample plans there and all kinds of questions, how to identify your target market and things like that. Uh, you can also contact SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, SCORE.org, and uh, they have counselors a thousand counselors across the country who will uh, talk to you either by email, phone, or uh, in internet, or however, Zoom, whatever. Uh, and they're free. They're prepaid with your tax dollars. They're all volunteers. Uh, so uh, you can go to SCORE, look up a uh, someone who has uh, your uh, expertise you're looking for, It'll give you a list of names and their qualifications, and uh, you can decide if you want to talk to them or, or not, and uh, those are great ways to do it. The other uh, one is the uh, Small Business Development Center. They're all over the nation. Uh, do a, a search for Small Business Development Center. Usually, they're tied to universities. 
Uh, so you may have to do some driving to a university uh, to uh, uh, get with them, but you can also sit down with them free. Uh, they will help you for free with your business plan, help you write it. Uh, they uh, have ratios of how much a lumber yard should do in the first five years or a pizza parlor or a mechanic or whatever. So they can give you, uh, they can give you some really uh, great uh, assistance there. So um, let's see, Linda, Linda's here. Hey, <laughs> welcome back. Great information. Uh, thank you for that. Hey, we're happy to have you here, Linda. Thanks a lot for. So on the social network side of things, um, yeah. the importance of uh, that, what uh, the Eagle Man was pointing out to you is the flip of that and that that's social network. Now, here's a very important key and we will repeat it ongoing. When you make this decision, you're going to set up a, uh, you're going to set up a homepage. You're going to set up a, a, a you no, know, for the network for people to come to you and your company, but you don't want you don't want to get caught in this terrible loop. Um, there are a lot of businesses out there. I will leave you to decide what one and go look it up. Just you know, you can type it in and and Bing or Google and you know start up a, a, a homepage. Um, but here's the key: any one of them that you call when they agree to set it up, they want to hook you. Uh, they won't talk about what I'm about to give you, uh, but what they'll give you is say, you know, like, well, I hate to use an example, but no, I won't because then I'll get in trouble. So they'll say to you, we'll, we'll set it up for you for free. Oh, that's great. Really? Oh, yeah. And we, we will show you how to advertise for free and we'll teach you all about this for free. Well, it's not free, folks, because if they set it up for you and they see you're being successful, then they come back to you and the, the minimum charge for all the things they're doing for you all of a sudden becomes a major charge. And uh, so to prevent that and to have some negotiating strength in your own homepage that you set up, you always get the key to it. You do not set it up with anybody and you don't, you, this is, this is not a choice. This is, that's it. You know, it, this is a deal. It's a deal breaker. And you tell them that I want my backdoor key uh, to be able to change and edit and clean my website and have access to it. And um, and then once you get it, you change it immediately. <laughs> so only you have access to your website and they don't. Yeah. Because they will steal it from you as good as the sun's going to rise tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is uh, do not let them uh, own your domain name. Uh, you right. must keep your domain name. So if you want to go somewhere else, you own that name. Uh, we own Tom and Shane dot com. That's right. Uh, King, yeah. That's very yeah. Yeah. We own Tom and Shane dot com. And we'll be putting up a website relating to our show uh, probably sometime this year, whenever I can get around to doing it. <laughs> but well, one of those things. So uh, let's see. Sandy says, uh, what time do you start now? Well, we moved it up to 10 o'clock so uh, Shane can sleep in a little later, you know. And That's <laughs> awful time you. Yeah. Well, no, it's actually because now that I'm my, I'm visiting my grandchildren, um, my yeah. oldest grandchild is five. She's going to preschool so I can walk her to school at eight. There you are. Yeah. yeah. And Or kindergarten. I'm sorry. She's in a kindergarten. Yeah. And then my other granddaughter is in preschool, but her father takes her to, pre to preschool at 6.30. Wow. Baby. Wow. Holy smokes. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I wanted to be free at 8 o'clock so I could, which I did this morning. Yeah. At 7, had breakfast with my granddaughter and let my daughter sleep in. And mm -hmm. yesterday was a wonderful day because I got to walk to school with my daughter and my yeah. granddaughter. I mean, I got to walk to kindergarten with my daughter yeah. and my granddaughter. I mean, how cool yeah. is that? I mean, serious, folks. This is great. And you can yeah. do this, too, if you live to work. And That's right. Start your own company, start your own business, and take some advice, which, for the most part, we're giving you free. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Russ says, uh, yeah, don't let a company own your domain name. That's what Town Square Media does. They control it. Yep, that's absolutely right, Russ. Uh, thanks for that pointing that out. And that's why I bring it up that, uh, you know, um, uh, if you're comfortable with somebody running it and doing it for you and, uh, you know, uh, you know, the charges up front or any future charges and you're happy with that, then go for it. Otherwise, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not a. 
Um, you know, there's plenty of uh, pretty simple programs out there that you can buy and set up your own website. I mean, you you learn the internet, you learn uh, Microsoft Word. Uh, you could you can learn how to build a website. Uh, you really can. That's right. And and uh, because of the nature of success in the world, especially on the internet. I mean. Do you know that the person that got paid the most last year in, in, the, in the world, in the world, $38 million was a 12 year old. Mm. Okay. On social media. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I it's mean, possible. It's, yeah. It's incredible. So yeah. you know, <clears throat> trademark in the last 30 years has been the, become the, the leading legal industry. Yeah. And this is why um, patenting, you have to give up what you've designed or in, invented to the patent office for them to patent it. Well, then everybody knows exactly how to make it. Yeah. And the true. problem you have with that is if you don't have the lawyers, oh boy. So now you're broke, yeah. you know, to, to go after someone because, you know, they're using your patent, you're in trouble. So what you want to do is trademark. We'll talk about that. And trademark's great because you trademark your product with a specific trademark, a marking, mm -hmm. like yeah. I have a trademark here for a company that I, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy. Nike, you've seen it, their trademark. And that mm -hmm. covers them. That covers them because under the trademark laws in the United States and the world court filed in Belgium now, trademark law yeah. is now international. Um, you can go after someone very easily and very inexpensively because they've abused your trademark. And yeah. basically are, are using, you know, you're, you, they can't take your product and put it under another trademark because yeah. your product is your trademark. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, All right. No, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll certainly talk about uh, copyright, trademarks, patents uh, as we go down the uh, line here with our, with our shows. We got a lot of things we want to talk about. Uh, next week, I want to talk about um, how to, um, how to structure your company. Should you be a sole proprietor? Are you a partnership? Are you an S corp? Are you a C corp? Uh, what kind of, uh, are you a, a um, limited liability corporation? Uh, do you need to incorporate? And we'll talk about all of that uh, next week. So we want to, we, we want to make sure that we uh, do that or uh, next Thursday, actually Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On, on, uh, yes, on January seventh. That's a great yeah. idea. And and of course, uh, nine o'clock Pacific and ten o'clock uh, mm -hmm. uh, Western. Yeah, mountain time. Yeah, mountain time. Yeah, uh, eleven o'clock Central, noon uh, Eastern. So look, look at the shirt yeah. on. Look at the hat. The, he looks like a cowboy. I, I do. I I have a cowboy hat. I should I should wear the cowboy hat. I'm I'm, I'm advertising a salmon lodge, okay? Because I'm on the West Coast. Okay? Oh well. <laughs> Good for you. All right. Well, let's do a uh, let's do a quick market wrap up, Shane, and uh, we'll get out of here. Uh, what's going on uh, in the markets? Uh, we just got into twenty twenty one. Where are we? Well, the Dow Jones is speeding ahead, up one eighteen today, thirty thousand three forty one. Wow! Already this year, it's already down, showing one percent. So that's how strong it is. It's been higher. The S&P 500 is at 3,719, up 18%. And uh, NASDAQ 100 is at 1,000, or no, 12,752, up 57%. Europe is pretty strong with the FTSE because things are working out in England with Brexit and leaving Europe. But most European countries are down. Uh, the DAC in France, the FTSE in France, uh, or DAC in Germany, FTSE in France. Uh, but uh, Spain's showing some uh, movement. They're, they're handling their viruses better, apparently. When you're looking at commodities, one thing we care about, of course, is oil. And, uh, you know, oil in Europe is uh, $53, $49 in West Texas. Natural gas, $270. Got to stay over 2 bucks, for, folks. It's not profitable to get it out of the ground. So that's what we got to watch on that. And uh, the only other commodity that we really like to talk about, because people always do, is uh, gold at nineteen dollars, one thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars, up seven forty. And my favorite, 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 silver buy silver dollars, twenty-seven forty-nine, up twenty-seven percent. Exchanges, uh, the U.S. Uh, currency still showing some weakness. That's good because it makes American 
products cheaper everywhere else in the world and yeah, that's what you want to look for big story already this year i mean we're only five days in thirty-two thousand on bitcoin so three weeks ago it was at 20 and it's zinged up it's up uh 469 459 dollars today so that's it we won't go into the bonds because there's no change on the 10 year u.s bond at uh, 0.96 and that, that's your market uh it's 10 o'clock yeah all right <laughs> forgot to tell you to turn your girl well, off. I, I, I was either turn the chart off or her i started wrong button. The wrong <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why you need her anyway you okay. know what time it is <laughs> you just like her voice <laughs> all right I'm solitary guy all right. Hey, don't forget our political shows are moving to uh, Tom and Shane Radio on Saturday, uh, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. You can uh, click listen now at uh, kmmsam.com and get those anywhere in the world. Uh, so we hope that you'll become a part of our political family over there. Uh, we're on the uh, net, of course, at 8 o'clock Mountain Time on Saturdays. Uh, you can get up, have breakfast with us, and uh, find out all the uh, political leanings and everything like that. And if you missed any of our shows, uh, they're all at kmmsam.com. Uh, both YouTube and Facebook uh, posts are there. And uh, if we do video, it's uh, over on uh, YouTube uh, and Facebook as well. Uh, our Saturday shows are not videoed, uh, so they are audio only. And, of course... Uh, you know, if uh, you're happy to watch us on YouTube now, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell because uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we we need subscribers. We need subscribers. Uh, we need to get to a thousand subscribers and uh, five thousand uh, or a thousand. Uh,